out your holy name. You are God all alone by yourself. The El Elyon, the Elohim, the El Olam. The Alpha, the Omega, and the, the beginning and the ending and everything in between. We exalt your holy name. The Father of all fathers, we say there is none that can be compared unto you, O Lord. We left here last week and we are here again, O Lord, to worship you, to praise you, to say thank you, O Lord. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Father, today is Mother's Day. We thank you, O Lord, for keeping all our mothers, O Lord. We have counted, we have looked around. None is missing. Oh, Daddy, we thank you, O Lord. Thank you for keeping them. Thank you for protecting them. Thank you, O Lord, that their joy over us did not diminish, O Lord. Daddy, from last year to this year, O Lord. Thank you for divine health, O Lord. Thank you for growth, O Lord, in all areas, O Lord. Thank you, O Lord, for not allowing the plans of the enemy, the agenda of the wicked ones, to prevail over them, O Lord. O Father, we thank you, O Lord. It is very hard to grow up without, with, with, without a mother. We thank you, O Lord, for all these mothers, O Lord. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, O Lord, that when we will do Mother's Day again next year, none of them will be missing in the name of Jesus, O Lord. O Father, we pray, O Lord, we cover them with the blood of Jesus, that it shall be well with them in Jesus' name. Oh, that they will remember people that don't have mothers. Maybe Mama is not here anymore, oh Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus that you take care of them in the name of Jesus, oh Lord. You will be their parent in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Savior. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen and amen. Good morning again and happy Mother's Day. The Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. The Lord will keep all our mothers for us in Jesus' name. As many people that are believing God for the fruit of the womb, by this time next year in the name of Jesus, they will have their own children in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Savior. Uh, last week, we started, uh, who remember what we did last week? <laughs> huh? Physical breakthrough. Did you remember anything? Anybody, did anybody do anything from there? For those of us that were here from physical break, from what we did last week. Yeah, the brother, I like that. It's like, thank you. You are trying to bring, bring, you are trying to bring it back. It's always like that in the exam, all right? You look, oh, I, I know this. They taught us this. Yeah. <laughs> so what did you take from there? Anything from here last week? One thing. Financial breakthrough. Financial, very good. Thank you. And we had used the, um, I think, Second uh, Kings 4, the sons of the prophet that, that died, and he didn't leave anything for his um, family. The Bible says a good father leaves inheritance for his children's children. He did good. He served God. He served God. But um, that part, he didn't uh, leave enough for his family, and you know, they didn't have anything. So as children of God, we have to be well-rounded. You know, as you serve God, you walk. You know, you take care of your family. You try to bring them to, um, uh, into that financial breakthrough. Ask, you see, God can do anything. I remember before the likes of uh, Archbishop Benson Daosa came. Pastors were, you know, very, they're still humble, but they, 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 there was no money in church, so to speak. Because pastors then, they thought, oh, this is just to drive a Mercedes or to be rich. is more or less like a taboo. But uh, Archbishop Benson Daosa came. He said, no, no, we don't serve a poor God. And have you seen Pastor? I mean, if you look at all these videos, wearing Agbada, expensive clothing. So he changed that aspect. The thing is, you know, the pastors we used to know, they would come and be, you know. But it was different. It was different. So he opened the eyes of some of our fathers. We serve a rich God. Cattle upon a thousand years are his, gold and silver. Yeah, he blessed Abraham. So as, as children of, as we are serving God, we have to look at all those areas too. And ask God that in this area, I, you are God, I need you. So we, are, we said that. We said that. And we also prayed again against um, evil common to men in this time as it were. We prayed against cancer. And I believe as the Lord liveth, he will protect us. None shall be sick in our midst. It doesn't matter how common it is. It will not get near us in the name of Jesus. So today we did physical breakthrough. Today we are going to um, spiritual breakthrough. I know, a lot, I know we are doing a lot. We're not going to we, by, four, by, by, by 45, we should be done. If not, I'm, I'm actually looking at 4, 940 so that we'll be able to do other things. Uh, but we just have to do this. It's still church. I know it's Mother's Day. Uh, 
He asked us to pray. I want us to pray this prayer before we go. Father, grant me spiritual breakthrough. Pray, pray for God to grant you spiritual breakthrough. I don't know what area you need spiritual breakthrough. Any other area, you know, breakthrough. Maybe to speak in tongues. That's a breakthrough through spiritually. You want to be able to speak in tongues for like five hours, six hours. You want to keep going a whole day. That's a breakthrough in a way, you know. Father, let us break through spiritually in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Our memory verse is taken from the, sec- from the book of um, Kings. 2 Kings 2.15. We have a manual. 2 Kings 2.15. Let us read together. One, two, go. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah dwelt rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. Let's do it one more time. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah dwelt rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. Um, let's, let's go to our text, Acts 9. Acts 9. We will do the two together, Acts 9. Acts 9. But, but before we read the, um, the text, I want to bring a couple of things here. Let me bring up so that we just mix it, mix it together. You see, Elijah, Elisha was minding his own business. We know the story as it were. He was on the farm doing his work when God sent the prophet Elijah to him. And he was able to break through when he got the mantle. But it it didn't just come like that. It didn't just come like that. He was diligent. He was disciplined. Because the sons of the prophet, they told him at one point, they said, do you know that this man that you are following, do you know that he will will, will go? He said, yes. And they asked him a couple of times. And he said, yes, hold your peace. And he he kept following on the man of God. And also, like we said, the other other sons of prophet, that was uh, maybe a pastor, whatever he was doing, that left nothing for his family. Elisha, Elisha was working already. He had something doing. Even though, as a believer, he was doing something. He had farm. Maybe his father's farm. But he was doing something. He was with that energy and tenacity that he used to serve God as well. It is hard when you are lazy. Or when you are not, when you are, I don't want to, maybe that's kind of of sound uh, maybe not too good. But if you are lazy naturally, even when when, when it comes to, even after being born again, it is still going to be hard for you to serve God. Because you're going to want to be sleeping when others are praying. You are not going to, it's not, except you ask God, that God, now I'm not a born again. I'm, help me in this area. I like to sleep a lot. I don't want to wake up at midnight. I don't want to do certain things. You are not, go, you are not going to just change overnight. So Eli, Elisha followed Elijah. He poured water on the servants of God's hand. He was very diligent. That's how we should be. That's how we should be. If you want to break through spiritually, if we really, if you are, if you are really sure that okay, this I want it. It does. It's hard work. It's hard work. There's no other way to say it. Some of us want to be like that, the geo. But you see, time to say I, I fasted for fifty days. I did sixty days. My man, I'm saying, hey, God help us. For forty days. Sometimes in this, I know how old that geo is about eighty something years. They are still fasting. Sometimes they're moving from country to country, from one place to that, doing the work of God, winning souls. You know, some of us. So there's a price. If you want to take anything from it, there's a price to pay. It doesn't come like that. It doesn't come like that. You know, it doesn't come like that. We want the, we want the spirit, the same spirit that came upon Jesus. That's the same spirit that they are using. That's the same spirit that we have. It's just that it depends on how what you want to put in there, how much you want to put in there. I remember my sister used to then, 
It was still, she was very young. She was used to do the seven days uh, dry fast and all that. In my mind, I would say, ah, don't kill yourself. But you know, that's how you build the thing in you. The capacity. You start from, you know, maybe two days, three days, five, seven. But you have to grow. I think Pastor Pius touched on this the other day. You can't just remain the same. You have to grow. And you have to deliberately grow. Deliberately grow. Let's read um, Acts 9. Acts 9, that's our lesson text. Anybody will read for us? Uh, 9? 1 to 9. Anybody? Acts 9, chapter, chapter 9, verse 1. Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogue in Damascus, asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. Verse 3. As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city. And he will be told what you must do. Verse 7. The men with Saul stood speechless, for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand to Damascus. Verse 9. He remained there, blind for three days, and did not eat nor drink. For three days. So he was, he was forced to, to not eat and drink for three days. Some Christians that you, some of us did not come to Jesus, um, uh, um, do I say obediently now, or easily. We were forced. We were forced. If God is going to use you, it's better to come humbly. But if not, if he's going to use you like Paul, one way or another, he will force you to do it. May you not come um, in time of pain and agony because sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes the person is in that state for one year, two years before they come. I'm going to read the um, lesson, uh, introduction and come back to that text again. Lesson introduction. Generally speaking, just like physical breakthrough, a spiritual breakthrough is an experience of a new and unprecedented level of spiritual state or status, just like in the case of Paul. In Christian circles, a spiritual breakthrough can be described as a time when a person is saved. So for as many that are saved here, you had um, a breakthrough before, spiritually. G gains a deeper understanding of biblical truth when you know that what lie is a lie anyway, the day you found out, or and if, if you know, or if, and if you are still not sure, until then, you are still not... Uh, you are still not breaking, uh, breaking. You are still not broken too spiritually. But if you have, then that's a good thing. Receive answers to prayer or wins the victory over a besetting sin. You know, sometimes um, Christians we have um, uh, weaknesses. Weaknesses. You are you are to know those weaknesses and um, and um, ask God for help. I think um, Abraham lied a couple of times. You know. But the, no matter how you look at it, half truth, whatever truth, you know, sometimes we have weaknesses. We have weaknesses. Uh, sometimes you have uh, men or women of God, they have anger, anger issues. Anger issues. Some men of God, they, they don't know how to give. They will preach from today to tomorrow, but give it, it's a, giving it is something different. You know? it's, it's, it doesn't come to them naturally. It doesn't come to them. I've learned a lot from Pastor Nii. I've learned a lot. If you are in this house and you you have not you have not you are not you are you, you are not learning from Pastor Nee or you have not learned anything. Giving is what all of us by now, and I believe that is that is one thing that is working for this church. That is one thing that is working for. I had I think I had with Pastor Kyle and uh, somebody yesterday. They were talking about somebody that left this church, maybe a year or two after, and they were still sending their tithe. They were still sending their tithe. You know. Pastor Nee didn't say much, but when you look at him, you will see it. What message do you want to tell people? Except God will himself 
ministers to people. You really cannot force them because of the truth. When people give ten percent or fifteen or whatever they are giving, it's not easy. You know, it's not easy. It's God. The idea of a breakthrough suggests a preceding struggle that finally picks and finds resolution and finds resolution. We all know the story of Paul, as we you know, the whole story. We read Acts 9, 1 to 9, our, our text, but Saul was there persecuting Christians. He was persecuting He was there when Stephen was killed. He was there. He was part of the people that Stephen prayed for, that Father forgive them. Paul was one of those. He was there. He was one of those saying, stone him, persecute him, do whatever to him. And Stephen was killed. Paul was there. Paul was there. And sometimes in my mind, I think God said concerning Paul that he will suffer the lot, he will suffer a lot of things because of me. In my mind, I'm saying maybe because he did that to Stephen, you too will have to go through that. Not you know, uh, God is not God doesn't look like that, but uh, just me. Just me. But he really suffered a lot of things. He suffered a lot of things. You remember the story that my wife said? Well, after, uh, about the, uh, the, the thief, the robber, the armed robber in Nigeria that gave his life to Christ. And Christians were saying, God should not, uh, God should not, they were just, they were against it basically because he came out and said, I gave my life to Christ. And Christians were not just happy. That how are you going to kill all these people? How are you going to be, do all these things? Now, all of a sudden, you are now a born again Christian. But really, <laughs> God is God. God is sovereign. So it doesn't matter how many people he killed. Just like Saul. Like I said, he was there when Stephen was killed. He was there. So when God now sent, um, what's his name now? Ananias, I believe. When Saul had the encounter, the spiritual breakthrough, and God sent Ananias, another prophet, to go and meet, uh, to go and open um, Saul's eyes. He didn't want to go. He didn't want to go. He said, I've heard a lot about this person. This person did the A, B, C. But God said, yeah, that's my servant. I want to use him. And when the man got there, he couldn't even call Saul by his first name. He said, brother Paul. You know, Saul was that bad. He was that bad. So, (laughs) So many of us, sometimes we are like that. You know, we look at people and we are mind just like that. They say, just like the, my wife said about the thief that no, this person can't give his life to Christ. And I remember when when that happened. I remember Pastor Motosho actually said something. He said that's why you have to be a born again. He said the people that he killed, paraventure, they didn't give their life to Christ before they die. They're going to go to hellfire. And now, the person, the thief, the wicked person, will now go to what? Heaven. It, look, it feels like an injustice, right? But, hey, that's why we have to give our life to Christ early. And he will make it to heaven. Just like that thief on the cross. All of us, we are praying for salvation and doing. He just said, Father, when you get the river, after doing all whatever he did, after doing all that, sometimes in my mind, when you look at the Bible, you look at it that some people are likely to be in heaven. I know they are, we are talked about the father of faith and those ones in the, in the Hebrews. But when you look at um, some of the people, for example, who was that now? I forgot his name now. Was it Joshua now? That God told him to put his house in order, or God gave him extra 15 years. Ezekiah, yes. So in your mind, you know, okay, 15 years to go. Let me walk this walk. Let me run this race. You know, as opposed to people that are not, thank you, so God, as opposed to people that are just maybe just traveling or whatever, something just happened all of a sudden, you know. He had time to plan. So these are the kind of, when you look, there are people like that in the Bible that they have no excuse but to be in heaven because God told them. God told Moses to prepare. You're not going to get to Canaan land, but prepare. Just prepare. You know? Talking about spiritual breakthrough. I want us to go to, um, uh, what's it going on? At, um, at line one. A lesson at line one. Do you have anything to have to, do you have anything to add, anybody, to what we have said so far? Contributions? Anything? Yes. Yes, thank you, sir. I just wanted to touch a bit more on Saul. I think for spiritual breakthrough, most times we 
tend to condemn ourselves and we feel like, you know, God cannot use me because, like you said, your past, you're thinking about maybe what you've done. But if God can choose to use Saul, then I feel like God can choose to use anybody. And when God decides to use us, I think just working in faith and in obedience, and I'm talking to myself as well, not thinking of, oh, can I do this? But just, I think dwelling in that, Dwelling in faith and just knowing that God has chosen me for a reason is very important. And I think another point I wanted to raise was when you mentioned what um, spiritual breakthrough means. It's not just when you give your life to Christ. Like it states here, it comes with like different levels. So we shouldn't just be comfortable with, oh, I've given my life to Christ. I'm a Christian now. I'm fine. There are different levels to it. Like you mentioned, we have weaknesses and sins. So it has to be gradual and continuous. It has to be a continuous process. We shouldn't just you know, stop at um, a point. So that really blessed me. I just wanted to react. Thank you. That's right. That's very right. You know, we should not condemn anybody. God is God. You know, it doesn't cost him anything to turn around anybody's life and use them. But it is very easy to say. But it is hard to believe sometimes. And I'll tell you why. I'll flip, I'll flip it. Sometimes, for example, Christians, uh, we Christians, like the, uh, or let, let's say um, the young adults or anybody, uh, women, men, or doesn't matter. If God asks you to marry someone that is like Saul, now he drinks, he smokes, he's, and, God, and, you, and the person that tell you, I'm not a born again Christian. Are you likely to obey? Are you likely to believe? You know? So sometimes it's hard. It's easy to say. But after, how are you so sure that this person won't along after five years? Because I've seen that too before. They will come to church because of that sister. And they will do everything. After, and after the wedding, they will not be one the sister, please. That was then. Don't, don't behave yourself in this house. Behave yourself. I'm not really well, though. You know the way they say it in Nigeria. Behave yourself. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> you won't enjoy this marriage. And they, you see, they are very wicked because they know that God does not like divorce. It's, that's why you have to be very, very, very careful. You see me, when it comes to the word of God, I don't know how to, God doesn't like divorce, I don't know how else to tell you. He doesn't like it. So you are not supposed to divorce. That's how I know how to say it. But there are some pastors, you know, they know, maybe you need counseling. I don't have such knowledge. I don't have such knowledge. It's whatever God says. Don't lie, don't lie. Oh God, I lied yesterday. Please forgive me. Not, eh, I'm not there yet. Maybe I'm not there yet. That's it. I'm not going to try to change the scripture. The God says, uh, what to the person that will change anything in the Bible? So maybe, maybe you have room for adjustment. I wouldn't know. But it just does not like divorce. So if, if you're saying, I'm not going to marry this person, maybe yes. But I think what the scripture says is, you have to be, uh, you don't have, you won't have to marry you will be by yourself and all that. So if you are ready to do all that, why not? But just fulfill other scriptures. And you see why it's, it's scary for me because when you get to heaven, you are, not going to you are not likely to know until when you get to heaven. So now at that point, how do you make amends? So that's why it's better to just, you know what, let me just stay here and be there. If you're not there yet, like I said, just pray. So like you said, for Saul, for Ananias, is it, it's, it's, it's for Ananias, he didn't want to go. Not that he didn't believe God, but how do you know when some, sometimes people pretend, like I said, they are not genuinely, you know. What, what about if it was a plot just to get him? But you are right. We have to believe God. And you see, the thing about um, God, make, the thing about spiritual breakthrough is this. My wife, I told my wife that I said, oh, thank God for where, I say it all the time, because I'm really grateful to God that I did not die in sin. I'm always very happy. I'm always very happy. And my wife said, by the way, you were not that bad, you know. I said, yes. Yes, you're right. But this is the thing. You see, God, when God brings, when God um, changes anybody, and uh, when God works on people and changes their life or what, it will be as if they've always been like this. They've always been straight. You know what I'm saying? That's God for you. I remember someone I saw, someone saw the, um, the movie uh, about Daddy Adeboe. I think it was you, right? And he said he didn't believe that Daddy Adeboe used to go drink and go to uh, all this voodoo priest. Titi won't believe it. <laughs> it's hard to believe it. Because when you look at him now, he doesn't look like as, as, um, what, as where he was. That's God for you. 
And that's how God is working on all of us. Or where he brought, he brought us from some somewhere. That's why, like you said, we should give people um, uh, break. Yes, sir. Go ahead, ma. Sorry, there was something you said that really struck me, which was, thank God I didn't die in sin. And Pastor Bumi had said, you are, you are not so bad. So when I went to college in my first year, my first few months, I went to a Christian high school, so I knew who Jesus was. I used to pray, but I'd never actually given my life. And I remember I had a roommate. We were all like 16, 17. She was deeper life, like to the core. And one day, maybe after like a month being on campus, maybe I'd gone to church once, because the place was far. And the girl just said to me, I have a question for you. You are not good, you are not bad. <laughs> How can you just be there? Like, if you are going to be bad, could be bad, wear short skirt, paint your face, do everything they are doing. And I was like, I can't believe this girl just said this to me. And because of that thing she said, I committed myself to my ministry in church, in school, until I graduated, just because of what she said. So a life of service to God, giving your life to Christ, like, don't, don't be in the middle, just cuckoo choose one, just enjoy to the, if you want to be bad, just be bad. But if you are going to be good, you have to follow it through end to end. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It, make, it makes sense. Yes, sir. It makes sense. I'll come back to you. Give it to Pastor Gladi. It makes sense because Jesus said, if you are not hot yeah. and you are not cold, I'm going to spew you out because you are, not, you are actually in the midst of nowhere. So, yes, sir. So, she, you know, she, she said, yes, go ahead. So, she was right. Just, just in line with yes, what sir. she said. When I, I remember when I was in college, you know, I was, I mean, the, the guys, they knew that I wasn't part of them, <laughs> that I was different. But I also tolerated them. Mm -hmm. I never said anything against what they were doing. So one day, one of them said to me, why are you so comfortable? In the midst of uh, <laughs> we, thought, we know you don't do these things. But again, you are so comfortable with us. You don't even, you've never preached to us. <laughs> but we know you wouldn't do certain things. So he, I mean, I, I, it was a big uh, blow to my heart. I, so many of us, we are Christians. We carry on, maybe on our jobs or in school. People know we won't do certain things. They know who we are, but we just never. Yes. We were too ashamed to tell them or to. About but they expected Christ. it. To say, I smoke, I drink. You never told me those things are bad, but you don't do it. Amen. Amen. Sometimes it's also important for them to look at that. Joe will tell us that. If you want, if you if you want to learn anything, just look at me and look at my wife. You will you look at my wife and you will know. But then sometimes I think it's actually very hard to preach to people that are very close to you. And I'll tell, I think, I think some, and, and I think there are maybe different reasons, but I think because maybe they see you, they know you do something, though you don't smoke, you don't drink, but you have weaknesses that they are seen. So although, so I sin is sin, whether yours is just to, to come to a meeting late or whatever, late, whatever, you know, they seen things that you, are, that you are doing that are not right. Even the Bible says Jesus couldn't do much. You know, so sometimes when people are very close, they, I think it's the sea fish, as they call it in Nigeria, right? So it's hard. So that's why it's very, very important. If you, the best way to do it is right from the get-go, get into that cycle of Christians. So stand there with them. So they know that, okay, this one is not, if you are not for me, you are against me. Let them know that you are for Jesus and you, that's the way. But if you have your, that, that cluster, they drink, they smoke and everything, and you, and you, you try to act different, they won't see it. They won't see it. Although I don't, I, so I also believe that sometimes we have to bring them close to be able to preach to them as well. But the danger there is, uh, God forbid, they they so they drag you in. God forbid. So you have to know where to draw the line. It's just like getting married, as we said earlier. You have to know where to draw the line. I want to. Uh, that's we're talking about. So, so that's, that that would be an example of um, a spiritual breakthrough for an individual. I want to go to maybe a group now, a group or a church. And I have a question. Um, Pascal, you used to, be, used to be attend Baptist church, have you? Uh, you used to go to Kerubu and, and the Seraph, my wife I know. Pastor Balari used to go to Apostolic Faith, okay. Uh, Titi, where were you before you came to Redeem? MFM. Ariana, where were you before you came to this church? What church was it? Huh? Methodist Baptist, you came to redeem. Uh, yes, ma. Christ embassy. 
What about you, Ma? Mom. Methodist. Uh, um, Mrs. Nakati, where were you before? Before you came to redeem? Oh, they have a church? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Uh, Baptist and Baptist and Anglican. So when you look at all this now, you will agree with me that uh, Pastor Adeboye, God helped him spiritually. Look at all of us. I was in the Apostolic Church. All of us, somehow, the vision, individual vision, that the Lord gave to Parking Dayomi, even maybe before some of us were born. Everything was falling in line and in place. That the other boy was even not a Christian. Maybe, or maybe he was a Christian, I don't know. Maybe he wasn't even born again. He got converted. God was, God was preparing. God was preparing to reach out to all of us. You, myself, although we were wherever we were. That's why God said, Jeremiah, before you were born, God had plans for all of us. You, you are not here by an accident. So once you are in this church, enjoy what enjoy the benefits. By better, I'm talking about benefits that come from serving God. So God did great work, spiritual breakthrough through our CCG. He started in a small place. In fact, I think it was last year. I think I've only been to camp just once. Just once. God did it a lot through this church. From Nigeria, they were just for conquering. And I think, I think now they are in 100, and how many, 190 something uh, nations. A revival, spiritual breakthrough, indeed. Whether we know it or not, whether we believe it or not, sometimes people will say, um, Daddy, Daddy said we should build church every, maybe every, every five minutes or hour. Whether you believe it or not, it's working. Is working. If not, you are not going to be here. I got. I went to redeem because when I got to London, there was not the apostolic church. And Master said, "Oh, let's go to redeem. There's a church not too far from us." I said, "No, I won't go to that place. I'm going to my mother's church. I was raised there. Although even I, I was just saying because even the, he was a believer. I, I was a believer like that. But I was raised there. By the way, I like their doctrine. I like their doctrine. They don't. You see, they 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 very they very firm. Although it has his own pros and cons too, you know, but very, very firm. Don't do this, don't do it. So there was no apostolic church, so, so, I, so I think, so I had to follow her to the place, and we worshipped. Because the closest um, apostolic church was about maybe six hours or seven hours uh, drive. <laughs> and so, so let's just, let's just, so we started going there. And after a while, my parents didn't like it at the beginning because they said, oh, now you are now a reading member. I said, but when I got to that, you raised us to be a Christian. And we are. We still go to church. But so, so they said, so are you going to abandon uh, the apostles? I said, no, I'm not abandoning God. I'm not going to abandon God. You know, church is just church, but you know, it's possible to worship anywhere. But now that I'm here, it's possible to serve God anywhere you are. And that's why sometimes I know people make demarcation, um, even within Christian, that okay, that, that this person goes to um, CCCG, uh, CC, um, CCC. Or the, what was Pastor Jake, uh, T.J. Potter's house. And I can't marry uh, somebody from uh, that place. I mean, we are different here. The way we do doctrine in, you know. Some things are major, some things are minor. Once it's a, uh, a church that believes in Trinity and things like that, and they, are, they, are not, they, are, they don't believe in, immor in immoralities, I believe it's a good place to be. I believe it's a good place to be. I just made that illustration to tell us that spiritual breakthrough. Hmm? Yes, ma. Go on. Okay, ma. That as, as PCG, God has helped this church greatly, greatly. People came from different backgrounds and everything, and now they are here serving God, serving God. Um, let me move to the, another point here. Lesson at line one. What time is it? Oh, six minutes. Okay, I'll mention this and we'll go to how. The removal of the cost placed on the city of Jericho. We know the story of how, um, of, of how Elisha removed the, uh, the cost on Jericho. The cost was there for, for a long time until Elisha came and he broke that cost. So as a Christian, you have power to break family curses. You have power. Power of life and death you have in your tongue. Don't be afraid. Things are in your family, in your lineage. You don't like them. You don't want them to manifest in your life. Today is Mother's Day. You have the power, the ability. 
to, to change it. As I've spoken in my head, the Bible says, so shall I do. He said, ask anything and I will do. You have the power to change it. You have the power. I just believe it. You are, you know, and I'm, by, by, by saying, I'm, I'm saying you have the power. I'm not saying you have to really. It's okay to pray and fast, but I'm saying that you are standing and you're looking at a situation that you don't like. And you are right there and say, this thing I won't let. I, won't, I, I don't want it to happen in Jesus' name. That's it. And you wait there and you stay. You are running late. There is no train. Father, I don't want to be late for this meeting. Make a way somehow. It will happen. I've done it many, many times. Different things, different. Not to test, but believing that I just want to be here on time. I'll do my own part, but if anything wants to be, I'll do. I'll do. So now, uh, let's go to why do people... No, not this. Why do people lose their breakthroughs? No, let's, let's, let's look at why. Let's look at the one before. How to experience breakthrough? It's a, it is God's con, con, exclusive reserve to bring about spiritual breakthrough. It is God. So whether God, whether, whether God wants to bring that, that the Adeboye from wherever I brought him from, you have no say in it. If God is trying to change Saul, you, have no, you, you can't do nothing. You know? If God uh, wants to... Anybody, anybody. If Adolf, if Adolf Hitler had asked God for forgiveness and a change, you have no say in it. It's God. The following requirements are very important for a spiritual breakthrough. Commitment and sacrificial life, like, like, like Elisha. You have to be committed to God. Like the sister said to you, you have to be committed. If you are here, let them know you are here. If you are there, let them know. Don't romance her sin. Don't, if you walk in, the, in that line, that fine line, before you know you are there, you don't drink, you don't smoke, you don't do anything, you don't, but then you are in the midst of sinners. You are, you are there enjoying the gist. In fact, you are reminding them, oh, you started the story yesterday. Please complete that story. Immoral things. Immoral things. Endurance to hardship, focusing on Jesus. The Bible says because of the cross, Jesus endured the pain. We are to endure pain. Endure pain. Pain of fasting, sometimes you want to eat. That's a pain. I'm not going to eat for the next one day, two days, whatever, three days. You are enduring, putting yourself in shape. You want to do the marathon, the New York marathon. Maybe sometimes, I, know, I don't know how long they, start, they, start, they normally start the trainings. Maybe six months, eight, one year. They're doing it next year, and they are trying to diet and everything. That is the same thing right here. You are putting yourself in, I want to learn how to pray. To, you are listening to tapes and other sermons, things that are going to bless you. You are not wasting time on social media. Even when you are there, you are, you are learning things. You are learning things. Um, do, do you have anybody, anybody, anything to say? Because we only have one or two minutes. That's it. Sorry, we are rushing this because we have a lot to do today. No? All right. So let, let me just highlight this and uh, that will be it. Why do people lose their breakthroughs? Why? Anybody? Why do, people lose, why do you think people lose their breakthroughs? Why do people lose their breakthroughs? Sin. I think it's sin too. I think it is sin too. You know? I think it is sin. So we have to run away from every appearance of what? Sin. If it looks like sin, run away. Run away. Run away. Let us pray. Eternal rock of ages, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, we exalt your holy name. We say there's none that can be compared to you. You are God by yourself, O oh Lord. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Father, we say you are God, O oh Lord. Son, we worship you. Holy Spirit, we say you are God, O oh Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. We learned about physical breakthrough last week. Today we are speaking about spiritual breakthrough. Let us break through on all sides in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. Spiritually, let us break through in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. Oh, Father, we pray that, O oh Lord, that physically we will break through in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. Individually, we will break through, O oh Lord. As a group, as a church, we will break through in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. The assignment, the tax that you have for each and every one of us, O oh Lord, we will complete, we will not abandon them in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. Again, we thank you for um, this Mother's Day. We thank you for all our mothers, O oh Lord. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that whenever we hear concerning all our mothers, it shall be good news in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. That the none of them is permitted to die early in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. That you grant them good life in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. Long life and divine health in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. When their children are doing great and mighty things, O oh Lord, they will be there, O oh Lord, to sit and rejoice in the name of Jesus. Another will not take their seat in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed.